Which part? Let me start today's session. This is the first session of your Python full stack development course. So in this session, I'm going to discuss in Python full stack development, what subjects I'm going to cover and each and every subject I'll discuss what is the purpose and and also I will give you clarity whether you need to go with only Python core and advanced or full stack development. So both courses duration, I'm going to explain you. And, and can you please mute your audio from your side? If you have any doubt, you can uh, try to uh, share your doubt in chat box. So at the end of the session also, I'll allow you to speak uh, with me so you can share your doubts by speaking, no problem. But right now when the session is going, in the middle of the session, any questions are there. So you can please try to uh, give your question into chat box so that I can read and I can answer you. And I request you please mute your audio from your side to avoid some noise because these sessions all are going to be recorded and same recorded videos we need to share to every students later. So please do mute from your side. So let's begin today's session. This is Python full stack web development course. Python full stack development course. In this Python full stack development course, I'm going to cover these subjects like Python completely core and advanced, Django, and then REST API, and then Flask, and UI, that is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, and then Bootstrap. Okay, these are the UI technologies. And finally, sixth one is, that is databases compulsory required, MySQL, and as well as SQL Lite 3, which is integrated with Django. So these are the subjects which I'm going to cover in our Python full stack development. So Python, Django, REST API, Flask, UI, MySQL, and SQL Active. And if you, if you go with complete Python full stack development course, so then the course duration is four months compulsory till time. So before four months, I can't finish. So if you have any uh, time constraint, so duration like two to three months, if you are looking, then you can go for other options where you find, but it's not possible from my lectures because I need to cover every subject in deep. So from scratch and intermediate level programming, advanced level programming with respect to all these subjects. So if you enroll for Python full stack development, so you need to travel four months with Durgasa. And for example, if you are looking only for Python, so core Python and advanced Python, that means basic and advanced level Python, then duration of the course is 45 days or 50 days to 60 days it will take. 50 days, maximum 50 days it will take to finish this only core and advanced Python. So now coming to this here, how we can select only Python core and advanced or full stack development. I suggest you, if you are a working employee, so already you are working somewhere. So in your project development, if they recommend to learn Python, which can be used in your project development as a script, as a programming. So then Python is recommend for you. No need to go for Python full stack development. And or else you are not a working employee, your requirement is you are going to do some job on Python completely full stack developer. So then in that context, I suggest you to learn complete Python full stack development or else you are a fresher. So recent passed out or else you have a gap like two to three years, two through two years gap is there from your academics. Then I can suggest you to uh, learn Python full stack development. So that may be advantage 
So once you have a strong knowledge on all these subjects area, so then you will be get more opportunities <clears throat> in reality. So more calls you will get in the context of all uh, full stack development courses. Okay, yes. Now coming to this. Just a moment, someone is asking. See that if you have any questions, you can feel free to uh, message in the chat box so that I can read, then I can answer you while session is going. But at the end of the session, let me complete my demo session today. And after that, at the end of the session, I'll speak with you 10 to 15 minutes. You can share your queries and doubts. I'll freely answer to you, okay? So just uh, uh, let me complete this demo lecture so that you will get clarity. So then you can ask any type of question regarding this Python full stack development. I'll clarify your doubts. So if you go for only Python, then 50 days duration, and if you go for complete Python full stack development subject, which I'm here covering, like Python, Django, REST, and Flask and UI MySQL, four months duration is required, sir. And every day session is going to be recorded, including today's session. So these session, these recorded sessions, uh, we will upload to you your Google Drive, so that my lecture of videos are just lifetime access and downloadable recordings also along with complete soft copy of material. So every subject, uh, we will send the PDF, core and advanced, Django, REST, class, everything will send PDF only. So no need to get any, uh, uh, what we can say, you don't get any uh, problem while watching my video lectures and in the context of practicing, or you can follow my PDF document clearly, you will get uh, uh, what we can say, practical things, everything step-by-step step I have included. So now let's speak about uh, which subject is for what purpose and why these subjects. So you have to get clarity in the initial stage only. So anything if you are learning means you have to know uh, in that technology, in that context. So what subject are there? Each and every subject, which purpose is required, you have to know that clarity. So that after getting a clarity only, so that it will be easy to learn. So which subject is required for which means you can get clarity so that you will understand clear concept. One thing for sure, in this all six subjects which I'm going to cover in Python full stack development, you are going to learn only one programming language that is Python. Remaining all are not a programming languages. Okay, so strictly remember. So only one programming language you are going to learn that is only Python. Sir. Because every Python full stack developer or any full stack developer, I'm speaking like Java full stack, .NET full stack, at least the person should aware one programming language. So here we are going to work on Python full stack development. So you need to have the idea about Python programming language. So this is only programming language, what you are going to learn. Remaining all are not programming language. Then what are the remaining, sir? Okay, yes, let me discuss about Django. REST API, Flask, these are all frameworks. You are going to learn frameworks completely. But that too, these are all Python-based frameworks. That means if you know Python, then you can move for Django, REST API, Flask. If you don't have any idea about Python, so that is uh, not required to go to Django, REST, Flask, and all, okay? So I strongly recommend if you know Python, then only it is possible. Obviously, obviously you can able to get it. Okay, no doubt at all. So now coming to this, without knowing about Python, so you can't move for Django, REST API, Flask and all, because these three are frameworks which are completely written in Python language. A person who know how to manage the Python script, that person can able to understand Django, REST and Flask. And coming to this UI technologies, UI technologies, to learn UI technologies, no prerequisite subject is required. Happily, you can able to start directly UI technologies at any time, no required uh, a Python or Django, something like that. UI directly can able to learn. And coming to this MySQL and SQL library also, to learn MySQL and SQL library, so not required to have any prerequisite because these are all completely database things only. 
database related things. Yeah, for working persons in Python, in the sense, if you know already Python functions and the Python uh, uh, object oriented programming principles, then Django is useful, compulsory, and along with REST API also. Most of them, they will teach Django, but they'll skip the REST API. But without REST API, we can't imagine that Django is fulfilled. So that's what uh, Django with REST API, if you lend, that will be good deal actually. Okay, yeah. So now coming to this, to lend this UI and MySQL, no prerequisites are required. Prerequisites are required. But now coming to this, to lend Django, Python is compulsory required. And also to lend REST API, Django is compulsory required. So this is the link is there. That's what orderly I'm going to cover all these subjects in detail. Once again, I'm telling you to lend Django, Python is required. To lend REST API, Python as well as Django both are required because REST API is completely depend on Django. It's an extension subject of Django. Using Django along with Python code, we are going to generate APIs, application programming interface. That too, this API is going to be generated by REST architecture, representational state transfer. This is REST architecture. Nowadays, most of the programmers in real time, they are going to generate APIs by using REST architecture only. And coming to this Flask, Flask is also framework I said, okay. But to lend Flask, only Python is enough, not required Django as well as REST API. To lend Flask framework, only Python knowledge is required. And these are the link is there actually, okay. So orderly how to lend. But to lend UI technologies, not required anything. To lend MySQL, it's not required because UI is completely front-end based. MySQL is completely database storage only here. Okay. Python certificate, if you want, you can do it, but no one will ask you certificate mandatory like this. So if you want to claim yourself as a certified developer, so after gaining the knowledge of Python, you can able to write the Python certification. So once you get a good credits, they will use, they will give you Microsoft will give you certific certification so that you can claim as a certified person that is add an advantage. If a person is new person, then I will not recommend any subject. So you can start your career as a Python only. So even the most of the students will think like that to learn Python, any prerequisite required? No, I can say no, not required to learn any C, C++, basics or anything. Directly, you can go to Python or full stack. So I suggest you, you are a fresher means then full stack is the best option. You just uh, uh, hold a few minutes, okay? So that, uh, let me complete my lecture. So at the end, 10, 15 minutes, I'll interact with you so that you can share your doubts and all one by one, I can give you answer clearly. So let me finish this uh, each and every subject, which purpose we need to use, okay? Now coming to this, Python is a programming language. Django, REST, Flask are frameworks. These are all Python based frameworks, but these are all not at all programming language. But to work with these frameworks, compulsory one programming language is needed that is called Python. And UI technology is completely designing purpose. This UI technologies and MySQL and SQLite 3 databases we are going to use in the context of Django as well as REST API. These two frameworks are need UI technologies for designing web pages or web applications. And MySQL also database storage area. Now let's discuss in detail what is uh, each subject purpose actually. First we are talking about Python and make sure that to learn all these subjects, Python is the first focus. So that's what our concentration, first 45 days to 50 days, fully completely concentration is on uh, Python only. Later we'll begin with the Django, REST, Flask, and all. This UI and MySQL will come along with the Django and REST framework only. So first Python side. So what is Python and what is the use of Python? As I said that Python is a programming language. Python is a programming language which is used to write coding part, coding part for the application development. Python is a programming language, which is used to write coding part for the application development. Generally, any programming language you can take. So what is the use of programming language? Generally used to write coding part only. 
if you want to generate or design any software application, compulsory coding and logic code is required. That logic code we can write with Python language only because we are using Python full stack. Even Java full stack developer, they'll go for Java. .NET full stack developer, they'll go for C-Shop.NET. So there are some combinations are there. So you have to follow that combination. You are in Python full stack developer. So Python programming language is must. You can't escape it from. So Python language can be used to write coding part for the application development. Then coming to this, what is Django? As I said that, Django is not a programming language. Django is a framework. Okay. So what is what type of framework it is, Django? So Django is a web development framework, web development framework, and which is used to, which is used to develop, develop, develop web applications, which is used to develop what type of applications? Web applications means websites with, with including UI only. Web application means the application which will provide services over the web is called web application. That web application development purpose in the Python context, we use a framework called Django. So Django is not a programming language. It's a framework. What type of framework means? It's a dev web development framework. Especially it is used to develop web applications only. But sir, what is framework general? Framework is nothing but it's a collection of rules or set of rules, predefined rules, or it contains a lot of built-in libraries. Using that libraries or using that predefined rules and regulations, we have to develop the application. So already rules was decided. You have to follow that rules, framework rules. They have given completely framework libraries. You have to install it and you can go through them implementation. But make sure that only Django will not work out to develop web applications. Okay, Dija, if you want to develop any web applications uh, with the Django framework, compulsory Python is required because we are going to write complete code in Python only. We are going to write uh, website code completely written in what? Python language only, sir. So without Python, you can't go for uh, what we can say, Django, sir. Python, because this Django framework is completely written in Python. So Django, Django framework, framework completely, completely written in written in Python. So I strongly recommend to learn Python before going to Django. Okay, it's a web development framework, which is used to develop web applications. Now coming to this REST API. So what is REST API? So REST API is also a framework. REST API is also a framework, which is used to develop, which is used to develop the APIs. APIs. Nowadays, you know that APIs are playing very uh, much good role in real-time applications. Okay. So now coming to this, the APIs means application programming interface. So application, application, programming, programming interface interface i'll discuss in detail about rest api when it comes to uh, its own subject like django after i'll talk about more uh, things uh, uh, i'll talk about api more things but in a simple way i can say rest api means it's a framework which is used to develop the apis that is application programming interface so generally nowadays the many of the users are using their mobile devices in their mobile devices then all are having lots of applications like YouTube, YouTube, Swiggy, Zomato, or banking applications like that. But the person is communicating the applications through APIs only. Whenever we are going to open any YouTube app from our mobile device, that YouTube app will send request to YouTube API. That API will communicate with YouTube applications. And same like application can send response to API, API can deliver response to our mobile device. So that means what you understand here, API is nothing but act as a middleman services, act as a mediatory software. So this can be used to take requests from the client and that same request can be sent to server. Server can give response to the API. API will give response to the client only. So it is act as a middleman services or mediatory software that is API creation here. 
that in most of the cases, the APIs will play the major role in real time because in our daily life, we are having a different technology applications in our mobile device. But finally, for doing your transaction complete, we are communicating with different technology applications so that multiple applications communication is possible with APIs. So in simple way, I can say the API is used to talk multiple applications with each other. That platform is called API only. So this is about REST API. This is a framework which is used to develop APIs for communicating with the different, different applications, especially in Python platform or Django platform. So without a Django, you can't go for REST API. So Django compulsory required along with REST API. With the Django only, we are going to create APIs only because Django is a web application development framework. In the web application development framework, first of all, we have to generate APIs for remaining at different, different services, which are going to be uh, uh, used from our web applications. So that API can be used by different, different technologies people. So that's what we need to generate APIs, communication medium. API can be used to communicate with different, different applications. That is API only here. So this API we are generating with what architecture? REST architecture. REST means representational state transfer. So this architecture, this is the design architecture pattern. So this pattern through only we are going to develop APIs only. So that's what I'm saying REST API. So REST API is a, a Python point of view. We can call it as REST API. Even this uh, REST API in the Java point of view, programmers will call it as RESTful service, okay? RESTful services. And .NET point of view, they'll call it as web APIs. So terminology is different. According to them, it's a different terminology, but purpose is same only. In Python point of view, we can call it as REST API only, okay? Now coming to this, what is Flask? Flask is also a framework, sir. Look at this, Flask is also a framework. Flask is also a framework. And also it is what framework, you know, web development frameworks. Flask is also a web development framework. So you know that uh, uh, you're saying like Django is a web development framework. Again, Flask is a web development framework. So which is, which is, which is, which is used to, which is used to develop, develop the web applications. Using Flask also, we can able to develop the web applications, web applications, but, the difference between Django and Flask is Flask is a micro framework. Flask is a micro framework, micro framework. Flask is a micro framework. That means using Flask, we can develop only single page applications. Using Flask, using Flask, we can develop, we can develop the single page applications only. Single page applications only we can develop using Flask. In real time, generally Flask can be used to develop microservices or small scale applications or obviously feature scope is a lot. Nowadays, Django can be used to many uh, well-known companies like uh, what we can say Spotify, okay, Spotify and also Udemy and uh, YouTube and so many uh, Mozilla Firefox that the uh, app uh, that the browser previously it was PHP, now it's migrated into Django. So there are a lot of websites are there with Django, with Python, even including Flask also, okay? So a lot of uh, top level companies are using. So it's a obviously scope, if you are going looking forward for web application development with related to Python, I can suggest you strongly Django only. Okay, it's a good, no problem. So Flask is a web development framework which is used to develop the web applications. Flask is a micro framework. Using Flask, we can develop single page applications, but using Django, we can develop not only single page, multiple pages applications and medium level applications and huge scale applications also, we can develop using Django, okay? So Django is, the scale is different and Flask is, a scale is limited, scope is limited. Only small scale applications and single page applications can be developed here. So Flask and Django, these two are web application frameworks you are going to learn. Now coming to this UI, sir, UI, user interface. So obviously, you know, in uh, real time, so any website, if you open compulsory UI is required. So whatever you are going to see on the screen for the first time when we open or any uh, website visit, 
So you are looking that the screen no, that screen is nothing but UI screen only, user interface. User interface means finally, when user is going to enter into the website, how the user is going to interact with the web form or registration form. This is called user interface kind of thing. That user interface we can prepare with the UI technologies. Imagine that no website is exist without user interface, without UI technologies. So I'm talking about UI technologies. So these are the UI technologies which I'm going to cover when, what uh, is recommend for especially Django. Django related topics through I'm going to cover all UI technologies here. Okay, yes. So Python related questions. See, the thing is once you are, you join my sessions and you have a, a clear platform to communicate with us any doubts through mail because all the recorded videos and material officially will come from my mail only. So you can able to communicate with mail for all the doubts and queries. You can post your a screenshot where, where you are uh, getting the problem in the practical session. So I, I'll replay clearly there. So UI technologies means like HTML is there, HTML, CSS, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, jQuery, and then Bootstrap. So these are all the UI technologies, uh, basics which I'm going to cover in related to Django, how much it is needed for Django, uh, REST API, class, then I'm going to cover all the things which related to UI technologies. In this UI technologies, a lot of things are there, like HTML. So why HTML is required here? Generally, HTML stands for hypertext markup language, as you know that it is used to prepare the web pages only, okay? So if you want to describe actual content of the website, then HTML is required. HTML is used to generate web pages, web pages. So only web pages, not enough because sometimes I, I need to do some more uh, look and feel I want to bring for my web pages. In that context, we can go for CSS. This is for what actually styling. Styling for web pages purpose, we can use what actually? CSS on cascading style set. So only if you go through HTML, your web pages look like normal you feel, but you want to make your web pages more uh, look and feel is better. So when compared to normal style, then you can go for CSS styling for web pages. Okay. Yes, we can do it. That will come in Django with uh, uh, MySQL concept with giants concept only here. Okay, yes. Now CSS cascading style sheet, that styling for web pages purpose, we use CSS only. So cascading style sheet. CSS is only for HTML. So if, if there is no HTML, you can't apply any CSS. Compulsory CSS is uh, required HTML elements or HTML tags only. Because on the tags only, we can apply some styling for CSS, uh, styling for HTML. Now JS is there, JavaScript it is. It's a, one of the most scripting languages in every web development. So you can't imagine there is a website which is running without JavaScript. You know, every website is going to be uh, integrate with JavaScript only obviously. JavaScript is used to make functional, functional, functional means dynamic web pages, dynamic pages, dynamic pages creation, functional or dynamic pages, meaning which what? If we create HTML, only HTML is going to be static resources, like the pages will display, uh, like registration form will display or login form or change password form. We can design and with styling CSS pages available, but how do we make some functional? So interaction pages, like uh, if I entered username and password or any data in the HTML pages, but how the data is going to be validated so how the functionality will make, so then JavaScript is required. Most of the cases, JavaScript are going to be used for uh, validations, form validations, means user inputs are correct or not. If you want to cross verify, then JavaScript is required. Okay, yes. So now coming to this, see, we are asking Spring Boot. Spring Boot is related to, that is in Java related, but I can't talk about that Spring Boot. So if you ask me any Django related question, that will be good and I can able to answer at any extent level Python related. Okay, so that's all. So JavaScript is a functional or dynamic web pages. 
that means if you want to perform any validations form validations whether user inputs are correct or not if you want to check then you can go for javascript along with html again to perform actions or functionality html tags are required so because once we write javascript functionality we can attach to that html page where we can perform the validation by calling javascript functions only we'll discuss that also in detail in our session so i'll try to create javascript functions and call through call in the web forms like html forms how functionality is going to be takes place and coming to this jquery bootstrap or advanced ui technologies these are designed and developed by using html css javascript only jquery as well as bootstrap both are advanced ui technologies these two are designed by using html css javascript so jquery is a javascript library it's an extension of javascript jquery is what actually javascript library sir so why java jquery sir because we have already javascript so javascript is nothing but it's a completely code from scratch code from scratch code from scratch that means if you write the code from scratch then it will make more code so that means if you want to reduce lot of code without writing the code from scratch if you want to use directly library which is available then java jquery is required sir actually jquery is required jquery is a advanced javascript library so it is just making some code is less we can do more operations jquery libraries you can download from jquery.com and bootstrap is nothing but combination of js as well as css libraries only javascript and css libraries are combinedly available in the context of bootstrap this bootstrap will make more look and feel of your web page more look and feel look and feel of web pages so we will focus on more bootstrap only in our django web application development because bootstrap functionalities will bring lot of look and feel for our web pages when compared to normal html as well as css so these are ui technologies for which purpose we are going to use this ui technologies which i am going to cover when i starts with django first few days five sessions django uh, introduction django setup and uh, uh, setup and application running process i will tell you after that we will focus on ui technologies once we complete that ui technologies which is recommend for django how much it is needed all the topics will be covered after that we will focus on completely django lectures once we complete django the extension subject is there along with the django with python script how to generate apis in python development so we will focus on rest api then finally we will go for flask this is the last framework which i am going to conduct the sessions uh, in our python full stack development flask is separate framework which is not really needed django rest api for learning flask flask is only for python is required okay and ui anytime you can learn and mysql what is mysql see as a full stack developer you should have at least a basic idea about uh, uh, any one database that i am recommending mysql sir mysql and sql lite tree both i am showing now because sql lite tree is one of the database which is integrated with django whenever we uh, what we can say create a django project or application automatically you will find the one integrated database sql lite tree only this database can be used to manage everything with the django related stuff in case um, if you want to manage your database separately then mysql is recommend here but it doesn't mean that django and python do not support ms sql like microsoft sql server oracle mongodb and other DP databases yes python and django can support any type of databases but just there is a, some some common combination in real time most of the python uh, applications are going to be used mysql as a database backend sql like tree only that's what i am including mysql because it's a common combination you know that most of the java programmers in full stack development they'll prefer to use oracle as a database most of the dotnet full stack developer they'll prefer as ms sql is a database microsoft sql and we preferred in python full stack development mysql is the majority of the cases but it doesn't mean that python and django do not support other uh, databases like oracle or other database other databases also we can use it no problem 
but mysql i am going to focus this mysql basics also i am going to cover in the respect of django as well as uh, python only so sql library this is called database storage database creation purpose we use uh, for storing storing for storing user data or client data we can say that so compulsory database id also need to be required sir because you are the python full stack developer you should have a uh, maximum idea about at least one database and at least one programming language and frameworks and ui technologies so this is completely uh, what i am going to cover in our python full stack development each and every subject purpose is what so once again i am telling you in entire these six subject you are going to learn only one programming language that is called python and django rest flask or frameworks these are not a programming language but these frameworks if you want to manage you need one programming language that is called python to manage django and rest python is mandatory to manage django uh, to manage rest api python and django is mandatory to manage flask framework only python is mandatory and to manage ui no prerequisites directly you can learn with ui test ui technology and this is also mysql directly you can learn without without uh, uh, linking with any other subjects these two are completely separately you can learn it no problem at all but in our lecture all i'll cover according to our convenience so first focus is completely on python sir okay complete python because without this uh, python you can't move with any subjects in our python full stack development so that's what i want to make you uh, comfort in python 45 days to 50 days once you know how to deal with python script so it will be easy to handle with django rest flask and any other things okay so this is about complete uh, overview of python full stack development course each and every subjects which you are going to learn all the subjects related recorded videos i'll send to your google drive along with complete soft copy of material you just um,
Hello, can you hear me? So this is about uh, Python full stack development courses and which subject is required to what purpose I in included clearly. If you have any question, you can feel free to ask me now so that uh, I can give you answer clearly. Hi, uh, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Tell me. What's your question? Okay. Uh, I have a few questions to ask, actually. Uh, hi, my name is Sherry, and I have a question. Um, like, my first question is, uh, do we have, uh, apart from providing vid video, do we have any online class where we all, uh, student can discuss the, you know, discuss no. the Python? <laughs> Mm -hmm. The thing is, I mean to say, apart from class lectures, uh, any platform is there to share the doubts and yeah. all these things you're asking. Yeah. No, there's no platform, but only the option is you can uh, contact through mail only. Okay. Yes. And uh, how many how many hours I have to study uh, every day because I'm doing a job? Yeah, yeah it's okay. Too. Good, good. But actually, the class is every day uh, according to Indian time, IST, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., only on our session. And if uh, if syllabus is not okay. going to cover within the four months duration, I'll plan uh, weekend sometimes one and a half hour also every Friday and Saturday. So that will be good. And uh, from your side, practice is compulsory required. Without practice, you can't do anything. So uh, only attending the classes is not enough. So compulsory, you need to practice at least one hour daily. If you practice, that will be okay. good. And at the end of the day, you will be satisfied undoubtedly. So that you will get, you will build confidence on this. Okay, so you said that uh, uh, Indian timing 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, right? Yes, Indian time. Okay, so is that an everyday class or? Everyday uh, class, uh, like a Monday to Saturday classes will be there, only Sunday is off. Okay, Monday to Saturday. Okay. Yes, exactly. And my fourth question is, um, yeah, my fourth question is, so as you said that, uh, is it and like, um, is it possible to get a job after doing this course for five, uh, like five months? Obviously, why and not? Do, because, uh, because this subject is very vast, right? So I cannot cover everything in five months. Five months is like a very short period of time. So do you think I would be eligible to uh, find a job easily by just doing this course? Obviously, obviously, you just leave it to me how I'm going to cover within five months. You will see this, what subject you are uh, going to get that. So it's a very clear, not a problem. It's not a big deal. Easily, we can able to do it. And what is the first job which uh, anybody can start who doesn't have any knowledge about the Python, who has experience in IT, but no knowledge about the language, you know, Python or Java, like that's, me. That's, from that, that, what that's, job? that's the reason. What job means completely software developer job only will get, undoubtedly. So once you learn the Python, so you can claim yourself as a Python programmer, in, you have to attend interview based on that. So they'll test your knowledge, how you strong about Python and REST framework or Django like that. Then they can hire you as a developer. So you should start work with Python only. Okay, so do I need to get the certificate from any institute to, you know, get a job? See, not required, not required. I personally not suggest uh, Python certification because the reason is uh, if you are a working professional already, then already have experience like minimum five to 10 years, uh, then if you want to looking for promotional or on-site uh, opportunity, then mm -hmm. you can prove yourself as a certified developer. So then I recommend certification, but normal, uh, student uh, not required to get a certificate certification from Microsoft. So you can claim uh, through your own subject only, not required. Mm -hmm. And do you provide a certificate just proof that you know we attend uh, this? Uh, that, that, that's we can do it. From our, institute, from our end, we will provide a uh, so and so person completed successfully this course, like okay. Kate and uh, from duration and all these things with your name, we will provide. That should be an online only. You can download it and you can claim that. Also. Okay, thank you. You answered all the questions. Yeah, yeah. Any more? And you can find this video lecture also Durgasoft YouTube channel after two, three hours. 
if you want to repeat this only five lectures will be uploaded for every online classes for mine so after that you can enroll the course and you can continue my lectures directly attending online how pay overseas payment yes uh, no problem regarding this overseas overseas payment on all these things then our team will take care of this and, so, and okay. they will they will assist you how to do all these payments so they'll mail you because you have already okay. registered with your mail for this uh, zoom meeting so that automatically they can get your mail so they'll uh, mail you how to do this process and all okay uh, in the in the chat i didn't see the branch code and i see the account number but there is no branch code so see, uh, i'm not aware of this payment all okay. these things because my duty is only to take the sessions but our back end team will take care of this so anyway i'll ask them to send okay. all these details to you so that you can find that no problem no hurry to do this uh, payment option still you have enough time to do this uh, please feel free to uh, attend the sessions two or three sessions more no problem at all okay so the transaction usually it takes two three days to okay. get a, to get into the account and uh, i just want to let you know that uh, you are you know i have watched many in python uh, class on youtube Mm, okay. uh, you your explanation is the best one this okay. is my honest uh, yeah i even i left a comment in your youtube channel uh, the way you are explaining it's it's it, it's excellent actually okay. you explain very well i hope i will learn a lot in yeah, yeah, that, sure, uh, sure, sure. those five months <laughs> sure, surely i'll i'll not disappoint you finally but if you stay like that then i'm fearing about myself because i need to reach your goals and all these things but anyway i'll do my best thanks for your thank comment. you so much yeah. thank you yeah. yes hello, sir one more yeah let's continue then i'll try to ask my question hello sir uh, dibigant is here okay yeah tell uh, one question from my side uh, <clears throat> if i want to know about the how to uh, as a right is query uh, query um, for uh, uh, comparing the two table in excel uh, i need to join the full stack development or i need to only the python is uh, good see uh, uh, that's what i am asking once again uh, joining two or more tables purpose generally we used to use a concept called joins concept in mysql related but you are talking about uh, excel see but excel yes. sheet in our python actually there is a concept is there csv file comma separated values dealing so it, that is possible with the only uh, you are talking about excel sheets there are two tables we can merge it no yes uh, by the uh, yeah in the database also uh, uh, sql query is there no problem. To... That, that that is required only python is enough because in our python we will deal with the uh, connectivity database connectivity also mysql and sql like and even excel sheet also we can interact with csv files no worries we can go for python first then if your requirement is huge again then later also you can decide to continue my lectures of dijang and test and plus other things but initially you can go through python so let's see this what will happen okay okay thank you thank you yeah yeah hello sir sashank yeah. here yeah sir right now i am working with our mns and i am not liking my uh, job they are uh i am working in erp and i am more interested in cplops in software development mm -hmm. and basically i know core java then after i i, I know spring boot as well but mm -hmm. nowadays i am hearing about the python more you know means uh, people are talking about the python more that python yeah. has a good future scope so that's mm -hmm. why yeah python is more uh, known for its machine learning part than after Data, data analysis, analysis yeah, data yeah. analysis or statistical yeah, yeah. analysis yes yeah yeah but i don't know about the uh, in dev development means yeah i mean sir. just i am hoping for the best means i will will be i will be able to get a good job after completing that python full stack development so can that's you true, uh, that's, uh, yeah. that's what web development purpose we are introducing no lot of frameworks here django rest and flask is there so that's what right. Uh, people might aware of that anybody those who don't have any knowledge also they know about python little bit but they don't have aware of much more uh, django rest and class framework yeah right, so that's right. what you are, you are going to do this also so that finally you will get clarity so how we can develop the applications using python and django all this yeah back to me see once i i will complete that job that i get 
start looking for the job that but after that we are still see i have some uh, experience in it industry but that that uh, that's not relative right not re relatable it's a, i can i can be able to claim that i am still a, a fresher means in the case of fresher can be able to get a job in good company with a, a, a handsome amount of uh, salary obviously you will get but only the thing is finally uh how yeah. you you how you work on these all frameworks and python and how your skill set was improved uh, that's a matter finally so yeah 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 right there is see, uh, one thing i know means my uh, see i i have developed a logic you know means through the years through all the years which i have uh, i know some part of the c then after some part we can say in c plus plus then uh java so means the basic is clear in see once you know any language that means uh, you have developed your uh, logic means you can easily learn any other language that's what sure, i sure sure that's true that's true but because you you have already aware of the code java whatever you said that's add an advantage uh, for learning python it's an easy when compared to them also but those who don't have any basics also you need not to fear about this python because it's a very simple and straightforward language those who don't have any background of it or csc also they can come and learn happily so you can settle your career with python and okay, thank you sir yeah um i have a, I, I think you know i have a one thing to share with everyone that uh, the with or learning with the, if if you learn only the rest app api you will get you will able to find the job because i got uh, i cracked the interview for the rest uh, customer support engineer for the rest api they just want you to know only the rest api even that's enough I, I, last time i cracked the interview however like with the help of google they gave me an assignment before you know for the screen test they gave me an assignment to do it with the rest api so i did it by using you know by googling it and then later on i couldn't get through that job interview because they were looking for the more experience so if you i'm just sharing my experience so everybody will have you know some like uh, some knowledge that if you have a little bit like not little, if you know about the rest api there is a scope also for the rest api yeah yeah for yeah the rest api is a very vast uh for two days i was just googling it and then how uh, you know anyhow i i finished that assignment and then submitted to the hr and then they selected me but they were not ready to take me because i don't have experience at all i told them honestly because i don't want to get you know like uh, the flunked you know after getting the job so i just told them honestly that i don't have experience but i just googled it and i got through it and, uh, yeah that's it i just want to share my ex experience with uh, with my last job interview i had an interview 2 weeks ago with the, with the rest api customer support engineer yeah, yeah. that's what uh, rest api is mandatory as i said that uh, bijang offer you must and should learn rest api because we will also focus more more and more on rest api only because a lot of things are there to create an apis but all our built in classes also available that's what focus is more on api with bijang Mm, okay. Yeah. And Mr. Karim Sheikh, uh, basically, um, okay, I can't explain in Telugu because the my target audience are uh, different different places that they cannot understand. But uh, I can um, somehow I can manage for you. At least you can able to go through your language. I can understand. No problem. I can you answer in a basic English only. No, not at all. Uh, Mohan, question: uh, Will you be also teaching the uh, coding best practices and uh, the pep page standards for uh, coding yes. in Python? Yes. Obviously, obviously, that standard Python enhancement proposal we will follow. So, what guidelines okay. they are giving? So, same pattern you can observe in our editor okay. how we are writing the code. Okay. So this is for today lecture and tomorrow we'll meet again on same link. So after finish this course, I'm eligible for a front end developer also please provide. So
some resume something yeah i can do it but front end developer instead of claiming as a front end developer you can also a claim that is python full stack developer that's better actually yeah uh, sir one more question after completing this course mean, not means uh, uh, apart from your uh, teaching do we need to uh, follow some other website or some another thing means or yeah, you... that, that that that's that's your wish actually even that is true also because the, as a trainer i can tell you what needed according to this all subjects okay but from your end also same as this whatever i covered the examples and uh, and some things in our session not need need not to practice same thing we can do some r and d by looking some websites or google it and you can get more knowledge and we can also do some experiment in that experiment if you have any trouble you can just ask me then i can clarify that that thing also very good actually okay yeah 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 if you want uh, exercise uh, that i'll take care because every topic i can post some questions uh so that you can come with your code and even i will come with my code and after that we'll discuss in the class at the end of the session so that's different students will come with their their task with different code so that will be good to know each and every task how we can able to finish differently which is the best one also will conclude finally that is also oh. it's a common thing in daily yeah okay thank you uh hello sir yeah tell me sir. uh is it possible to change the timing like 7:30 to 8:30 no sir i'm extremely sorry because my schedules are completely packed up even i have to start 8 am here in my institute offline uh, i'm waiting for going there <laughs> every hour there is a session so i can't able to go that uh, sir because of this session in 7 to 8 am sir so it's not possible to join this yeah that's i can agree that but uh, from my end my end it's not possible because once i shift the time for this batch then for my every batch is going to move half an hour after till night 10 o'clock so i can't manage this this is big deal for me but anything sir new batches will start for uh, so... new batches are, are there from durga soft so many no problem other faculties also there you can inquiry with them so you can feel free to join with them no problem at all for us so you can go through them all so it's a fine but my batch so, is this is right now currently one of the long time this is this slot only i got it uh, pre slot that's what they schedule my batch now so when this batch class will start so you can assume that this is already started so only demo lectures for five days or four days only you can from your okay. end this is demo lectures but my end it's already regular sessions only okay yeah so same time right every day sure same time okay so for the for the link do we uh, i will get the zoom link in my email or i have to go to the website to no, go actually, i think i think you are you have uh, you will get the mail also today so you will okay. get the zoom link yeah, i got it yeah uh, for mm -hmm. first five days only you can use this link and uh, this is okay. for demo, demo purpose our durga soft team will handle this link for five days after enrolling okay. all students then everything session is in my hand only i can able to manage that go to meeting link i will give from my side okay so can i if i have a question regarding the payment you how how to make them do i need to can i make can i respond on that email which i got a zoom link surely you can respond to them and what's your name so that i can uh, inform to them also immediately so that they yeah mail. Sure, my name is Sherry. S H E R R Y. Okay, fine. Thank you. So I'll inform to them so that they'll interact with. You. Okay, thank you. Okay, fine. So I'm sorry to say this is I need to leave. It's time because on the same link, some other session is ready to uh, start. So that's what they are asking me to stop. So sorry for that. Any more questions? I'll answer you quickly in tomorrow session or the end of the session. So that have a nice time. See you tomorrow. Sir, last Thank question. Thank you so much. Sorry, yeah, sir. Last question. Tell yeah, me. I am a job in data analysis. Do I need to join with Python or full stack only, developer? Only Python, sir. Only Python is required. Don't waste your time and money for joining full stack. Only Python is enough for you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Excuse me, sir. I have a one quick question. Tell me first. Yes, I'm also working as a data analytics, so I just wanna. participate only python class only python is want. required only python is required okay so the pay is going to be different or is it same pay no 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 different sir different you should pay less 
but i can't okay. disclose the pay details as a trainer from my side you can contact to them so they'll assist you clearly okay and i'm from texas usa so you should provide us different kind of link for payment because i don't i can't pay on the bank account. yeah that that's things everything's uh, my back end team will take care of that i don't know much more about that so they'll take care of they'll assist you don't worry okay all right thank you man bye yeah yeah so for for all the for, for all the six uh, SQL, UI, Flex, uh, REST API, Django, Python, all of them whole package is five thousand, right? No, 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 it's not. It's not. Okay. It's not only Python that is you are asking you are saying that, but other uh, all total package that is different. You can enquire with. Okay. Them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, uh, I am actually uh, a kind of intermediate. For example, I can write uh, classes, uh, mm. I, and I can uh, write some uh, uh, functions, and uh, I I use my uh, Python for my table comparison or get data using ODBZ uh, jars uh, to the uh my database and some wrap around scripts I, I i just do it with python mm. and uh, uh so uh, I, I don't know whether uh, i should start here or i should start with advanced or this is that one so uh, as your wish you can uh, just take the few sessions so that you can decide that actually in uh, a basic python we are going to cover a uh, complete fundamental concepts like uh, okay how to uh, work with loops and while loops, nested for loops, operators, data type, even more uh, data structures also there. That is very important to deal okay. with every time data. And even okay. functions, modules, uh, lambda expressions, these are all uh, okay. we will cover into uh, core basic Python only. <clears throat> okay, okay. Because I, I know like uh, the all the data types like dictionaries, uh, tuples, and then I can work with the JSONs uh, and then uh, Lambda functions, I'm quite comfortable uh, in using it. Uh, so, uh, I mean, basically, um, and also, uh, also I'm looking at packaging, like how to package and, uh, and the advanced concepts in classes like how uh, we can uh, do the um, encapsulation or abstraction, how we can do it using classes. Uh, yes. So that's what, because for my, uh, right now the knowledge is for any functions, I create a class or method in that and I use it. So I, I'm at that level only, probably, I, I mean, you are a better judge on that. So I just yeah. thought of checking. No problem, no problem. You are uh, the correct track only, but uh, we will discuss in our session like in detail about uh, class and each and every method inside the class, how it will behave exactly. Because different okay. types of methods are there, not only one method. Obviously, class yeah. contains several methods like instance method, static method, class method, uh, different types of methods. Correct. Yeah. Different, different point of scale, we have to use that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's begin today's session. And uh, in the last session, we just discussed about uh, basic uh, subjects, which I'm going to cover in Python full stack development, like Python, Django, REST, and Flask, UI, MySQL. And even I have discussed clearly which subject is for what purpose also, I clearly mentioned in the last session. And today's session, I'm going to give complete uh, overview of Python because this is our main subject. Without this subject, we can't move forward for any frameworks and other uh, process. So this is our first subject and Python. So what is Python means? As I said that Python is a programming language which is used to write generally coding part for the application development. And here we need to know that what type of language it is. The reason is already we have existing languages like C, C++, Java, C Sharp, .NET, more vast languages which can be used rapidly in every application development like Java and C Sharp, .NET. So that are also strong enough to build any application. But why Python uh, became a popular language and also why people are moving towards Python. So what is the reason behind that means? So basically, uh, Python is having simple syntax, 
and straightforward code and there is no complex uh, syntax and you need not to concentrate on uh, uh, python script more because it's a straightforward everybody can understand because of this reason it's not became a popular the main reason was it's provide completely huge standard library that is the main reason one of the key reason why python became a popular and uh, so oftenly used language in everywhere means it's provide completely huge standard library libraries means uh, it's completely pre uh, defined classes and along with methods so in each and every aspect of application so once we download python software and install you will get plenty of libraries directly you can able to use it and you can implement your application code so once the libraries are available so no need to write the code from scratch you can able to reuse that libraries and you can inject that libraries to your application and you can use that stuff from there so no need to write code from scratch that is the big advantage of python and moreover the advantage of python is python is completely cross platform as well as platform independent also it can run on any platform so that means uh, uh, it's a portable language we can migrate from one platform to another platform easily and moreover the libraries which will come in the context of different different applications so the person who wants to develop data science or data analysis they can get libraries like pandas matplotlib numpy these also i am going to cover in the end of the session of python so pandas for data analysis purpose and matplotlib is for visualization purpose uh, pandas and matplotlib are developed on top of numpy so numpy is also one of the part of our session and data science all our data analysis application purpose also they are providing completely libraries and even stat statistical analysis and machine learning artificial intelligence and network programming and also business applications gaming applications and many more applications we can develop using python for all the applications python supports built in libraries so that's the reason the uh, programmer choice obviously to build their application quickly without interacting with a lot of code uh, directly they can collect the uh, stuff from python libraries so that's the reason python became a popular language in every uh, projects or in every technology python contribution is there nowadays so that's the reason so python is a simple and straightforward and it's provide completely huge standard libraries because of this reason only python became a popular language one of the first choice as a programmer in reality <clears throat> now coming to this python is what type of language is python is a general purpose so everybody knows that what is meaning of general purpose so general purpose means it's not a, a specific language which is which can be used to design uh, for specific type of application it's completely general purpose this can be designed for develop any type of applications not only specific like using python we can develop web applications stand alone applications and desktop gui applications and gaming applications and data analysis applications and many more so it's an not designed for only specific point of scale it is going to uh, uh, use it to develop complete different different types of application that is the meaning of general purpose programming language and coming to this python is a high level programming language meaning is <clears throat> as a python programmer while writing python logic so we need not to concentrate on low level activities that means memory management and security all these things built in available in python so python will take care internally so the memory management with the help of garbage collector and security with code access security so it takes care everything you need not to contribute from your side so no need to concentrate on low level activities because it's a high level programming language and coming to this python is interpreted programming language <clears throat> interpreter so generally whenever we go for like a c language or c++ even java and c sharp dotnet so java is both interpreter as well as compiler 
but these are most of the cases like compiler only here compiler based language what is meaning of compiler based it's a simple when we write the code in this language and the code will be compiled whole program at a time will be checked and run that is called compiler but when it comes to python even javascript also so it is interpreted language sir. interpreter interpreted based means whenever we write the code in python language that code can be compiled uh, that code can be cross verified or checked line by line only so line by line code will check and execute so that is called interpreter whole program at a time it will check and execute that is called compiler so python is interpreter based so that means how many number of lines you write in python script so each and every line separately will cross verified and it will execute so that's because of this reason always python execution speed is little bit slow when compared to these existing languages but it doesn't mean that it is a drawback of python because it's a <clears throat> useful tool also there is a debugging option is there in python so whenever your code is going to be run line by line as a programmer you can find out easily where the mistake is available you can do that uh, debugging of programming clearly while working with line by line code so this is interpreter that's the reason when we write huge number of lines of code in python so you don't uh, uh, recognize the number of errors which will be displayed in the output window every time only one error will be notified so that is the reason is when python start execution from the first line if all the lines are correct for example imagine that line number 5 there is some problem immediately python interpreter will stop the line number 5 code and it will show the error clearly on which line it's available and what type of error so only one error you, you will notice because of it is interpreted only so when it comes to these languages like c c++ java c sharp dotnet these are all compiler based how many lines you have written the code whole lines will check and execute that's what we notice in this languages especially while working with these languages programmer will notice that multiple lines errors like if you face like five errors five errors will display and with along with line numbers and 10 errors 20 errors if there is no errors obviously compiler will successfully generate the exe file it will ready to execute now but in python not like that so it won't generate any exe here because it's an interpreter so each and every line by line code will check and finally it is going to be execute but it doesn't mean that there is no compilation in python so in python compilation also there but as a programmer we are not going to do compilation explicitly internally interpreter will take care of the compilation line by line checking process so this is about interpreter it's a interpreter based even javascript also interpreter because javascript also same almost equally python so now coming to this python is dynamically typed programming language dynamically typed programming language this feature is very a uh, useful feature for programmer side because in other languages the programmer need to take care the data type at the time of writing the code so now you can see statically typed these languages statically typed means at the time of declaring any variable the syntax of uh, uh, declaring data type or variable uh, in other languages this is the common syntax data type then after that variable name equals to value and then semicolon is ending with the statement that's must if you miss semicolon in other languages so it will give error completely suppose here this is my syntax in this data type i declared as a programmer because my value is 10 so i have to know that this value based data type so if this value is float i can't say that it is an integer so it will give error so i can how I, i should have the clarity about this data type and variables clearly this variable data type what i need to do so that's what here it is statically typed means at the time of writing the code you need to decide the data type of the variable based on its value but in python there is no problem at all so it is a dynamically typed no dynamically means during the program execution statically means before execution so dynamically typed language means in python no need to define any data type just we can say variable name equals to 
value and variable name is equal to value and 10 only. Even no need to give any termination symbol like semicolon because Python program automatically terminated once line is ended. Even if you include this semicolon also, it's not wrong in Python, it will accept it, no problem, but it's not required. So you can see this, I didn't mention any data type of the variable before declaring the variable. Even if you mention the data type of this variable like this, it will give clearly syntax error. It will not allow you to declare the data type from the programmer end because it's a dynamically typed. Based on it's a value, data type will be decided. For example, I want to show you this one quick example. For this, I'm just opening a default editor that is called IDLE. Whenever we download and install Python software, you will get a default editor that is called IDLE, Integrated Development Learning Environment. You need not to worry. I'll discuss in next session clearly how to do Python setup from scratch, what softwares are required, how to download and install it, and what is our complete editor throughout our sessions we'll discuss in detail. But right now I would like to show you a simple program. So how data type dealing. So ideally software I'm opening. This is the default editor. As soon as when we click on this ideally, so you'll notify this, this is ideally shell. This is editor tool. So in this editor, just I'm typing A is a variable equals to is operator and 10 is a value. So here you can see as soon as when we hit the enter, then automatically 10 will be assigned to A. Do you want to print A? No need to use pre print print statement. It is optional to use here. Directly you can say A and enter. You got this value clearly. And you can see if I declare int A equals to 10, this is wrong. In Python, so dynamically data type will decide for the variable. So that is integer, but we have mentioned integer from our side that is not correct. So integer invalid syntax it is. So uh, if I go for this value A and A is printing, but I, I want to know that which data type is assigned for my variable. So if you want to know that, just simply you can go for type function. Type is a built-in function in Python to know which data type is assigned for your variable. It's a class type integer type. And even if I declare the A is 23.4 and A is printing and type of A is what actually float type. So like this, based on the value data type will decide uh, internally. So we need not to specify any data type in Python. Only you should focus on the value which you want to assign to them. Then that value based on its value, Python interpreter will decide the type of variable only, okay? So this is one of the advantage. So you need to focus on only values and variables. No need to think about data types, okay? So, but it doesn't mean that Python do not have any data types. Lots of data types are there like int, float, bool, complex, and even more sequence or collection data structures are there. String, list, tuple, set, dictionary, range, and so on. So a lot of data types are there here clearly, okay? So we'll discuss that data structures also in our upcoming session. So now you can see dynamically typed, okay. Now coming to this Python is, case sensitive programming language. Case sensitive means how the way you declare the variables and the function names or class name, any names, same way how to access, you cannot able to access different way. For example, if I declare a value 10, then I can access that through print function a only, but I cannot able to access this with capital letter A because it's a case sensitive. What the variable you declare uh, like name of the variable or name of the function, name of the class, how the way you declare, same way how to access. If you access in different way, it won't work out. So ultimately Python is a general purpose, high level, interpreted, dynamically typed and case sensitive programming language. What type of language means? Now coming to this, why Python? Why not other language? Just now I discussed clearly, Python provides a flexible way to write the code when compared to other existing languages. And moreover, Python syntaxes are very simple and straightforward. There is no complex syntax. And also Python provides lots of built-in libraries, which will make programmer uh, task will be easy. So you can able to write the code uh, directly by using that libraries. 
And imagine that when compared to other uh, programming languages, so for example, if you want to display some output on the screen like hello world or welcome to something like that, if you want to display some single line output statements onto the screen, if you go through Java or C or C++, at least minimum, you need to write a four or five lines of code because the structure is like that only in those languages. If you go for Java, first we need to import packages and after that you have to declare the class, public class, class name and let uh, open bracket, close brackets are there and public static void main, so many things are there. For example, you can see this Java language. So I'm including one class like public class, class name is what we can say, this class name I can use and open bracket, close bracket. This is very simple, uh, straightforward structure also, but uh, somewhat complex because every time you have to follow these rules and regulations, if you miss any uh, brackets or semicolon or something, so it will give us error something. String, square bracket, arcs, then open and close. Finally, if you want to display any statement, system.out.println, I can say, hello. This is the code actually in Java. But here, in Python, need it not to write these many lines of code. Almost same lines you can write in C Sharp as well as C language also. But in Python, not required to write these many lines. In Python, simply if you want to display hello, then just to use print statement. It's a print is a function. You can say that hello, that's all. So one line is the matter. So easily you can able to manage the code clearly, sir. Okay, this is what hello statements we print in Python programming state forward. But how that manage? Yes, it's an interpreted language. No, no class is required. No method is required. No object is required. But here, line by line code will check whatever the lines are stated. Now you can see this. Uh, this line automatically will executes. Yeah, please uh, go ahead. Your question. Any question? So when you write the code, do you need to? Is it necessary to write the bracket and then a semicolon? Not required. Or we can just see the thing is here. Uh, if I use semicolon, it's not required here. Here brackets oh, okay. are brackets are required here when we go for some PyCharm editor or other editor. But whenever we go for some ideally platform, so now you can see here no need to use any print uh, directly. You can go for hello, or else you can write like print function. Also, we can use like this. Okay. Yeah. So do you manually type the bracket open and bracket close? Yes, yes, I'm manually typing because it's ideally. So brackets will not come by default. There is no intelligence option. That's what I suggest you uh, in our upcoming session. Also, I'll introduce so many editors. In that, I'll go for write editor like PyCharm editor. Then we go for PyCharm editor and everything will become in the intelligence like suggestion. So you need not to worry about where we should use capital letter and small letters and brackets. Automatically it will capture from intelligence. But here, no intelligence. So automatically you have to take care how to write your program with spelling mistake. Even you can see when I try to write something P capital and hello, I can say, I don't notice that here error uh, until we execute the program. So when we execute the program, error mm -hmm. is noticed here. So P letter capital, did you mean print? Yes, I mean print only. But this type of things will not be available in upcoming editors like PyCharm editor I'll introduce, no? There, there don't mm -hmm. be any problem like this. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm, I, I strongly recommend to use a proper editor and professional editor, which is exclusively designed for Python. So that will be recommended in the initial stage of uh, Python learning. So if you know already how to manage the syntax and Python script and well, then you can go through any editor, even you can write a code in Notepad, Notepad++, any editor you can use. Because if you go through Notepad and Notepad++, even ideally platform editor tool, there don't be any intelligence and there is no recognition tools are there. That means what programmer is expect expecting, it won't populate you. So that is the big problem in the initial stage of learning Python. So what I suggest you, better to use PyCharm editor, which I'm going to okay. continue all my lectures, including uh, Dijang or REST, Flask, UI, everything will be covered in PyCharm editor only. That I'll introduce in tomorrow. So I'll show okay. you installation steps and all. You can compare with which editor is best. What use your uh -huh. comfort, you can go through that. Okay, thank you. 
So this is a uh, uh, by Python means it's straightforward syntax and easy uh, simple syntaxes are there and that's what we preferred Python here. So in uh, Python there are huge standard libraries are there which may not available for fulfilling any application type in other languages. That's the reason people are moving towards Python for make their applications are properly and quickly development process is possible with Python only. And now I'm going to discuss a small uh, history of Python. So Python was designed and developed by Guido Van Rosen. He's the man who invented Python. And in the year of uh, 1989, the first version, the first version, the first version of Python was released, released in the year of, in the year of 1991. So this is the first version in the year 1991, the version number is 0 0.9.0. And later the versions are like 1.x, 2.x, 3.x. X means there is lot of subversions are there. There are lot of subversions. So now you can see 1.123 and so on like that, 2.123 and so on, 3.123 and so on. So I'll uh, given clearly, uh, I've given clearly this all version in, in my uh, PDF actually. So you can able to find that PDF attachment once we send this. So now you can see, let me open the PDF so that you can get clear idea. And even versioning is main version you can just remember uh, remaining versions are not required so these are the versioning clearly which i mentioned in my documentation so look this ones these are all sub versions but not required to remember all these versions main versions are this is 0 0.9.0 and 1.0 2.0 right now we are in third version and the current stable version is 3.11.0 how do you know that current version stable version means so to you can visit this official website that python org so that you will come to know what is the current stable version right now python 3.11 so python was designed and developed by guido van rosam he is the man who invented python in the era of 1989 the first version of python was released in the era of 1991 the current stable version is 3 11.0 1 1.0 and you can see visit this official website also simply you can go to uh, google and open this some um, uh, what we can say tab let me open go to google and download python you can search simply yeah so you will be able to see this official website python.org now you can see this is latest version download python 3.0 11.0 and if you want to download this current stable version click on it and also if you if you are looking for old versions you can scroll down you'll be able to find the plenty of old versions here so each version you want to work <clears throat> on that version you can click on download and you can use it so we are using latest version only 3.11.0 in and moreover python is completely cross platform as i said which will be run on Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac OS, and others. So if you want, you can download and install it quickly. So it's not a big deal to download here. It is only one minute of time. I'll show you complete downloading and installation process and set up everything in tomorrow's session clearly. And now <clears throat> this is the versioning. And now why Python, uh, uh, we can call it as this programming language, why we can call it as Python. Actually, the author, uh, the name Python was selected from TV show. There was a TV show which was broadcasted in BBC channel at the time of writing script of Python language. Uh, that TV show name is called the Monty Python Circus Show. So the author was selected a name Python from this show and he has given working title of his programming language called Python. That's what we are calling Python. And mostly the author uh, developed Python language by taking all programming features from different, different languages. For example, programming features from C and object-oriented programming features from C++ and scripting language features from Perl and Cell script and modular programming features from Modular 3. 
So finally, he created a functional oriented language, object oriented language, structured oriented language, that is Python. That means Python supports a lot of data structures. We need to discuss that also. And Python supports a lot of functions and functional oriented also. That means it will be provide reusability. If any programming language, functional oriented, that means reusability is possible. So we can able to reuse the code without rewriting the code. So the main uh, point is Python. We cannot uh, repeat the code. We can use uh, the code. That means we can able to reuse the code. We cannot repeat the code. That is the matter. So instead of repeat the code, we can reuse the code. How we can reuse using functions and using object-oriented programming. In both case, we can able to reuse the code. But functions through, we can reuse the code, but scope is limited. Why? Because inside the function, how much code you write, that code, you can able to reuse it. But in object-oriented programming, there is a lot of scope is there inside the total class, how many number of functions we created, that class completely can be reused through inheritance concept. In inheritance, the parent and child class generally will be created. In the parent class, whatever we have implementation, that's by default will applicable to child. That is inheritance rule. We'll talk about that in detail in object-oriented programming. That means in advanced Python. So this is official website of python.org. This is, if you can download any version, you can able to download from this official website clearly. Now coming to this <coughs> application area of Python. So generally, this Python language through which type of applications we can develop generally, application area of Python. So what are the general applications we can develop? So we can develop standalone or desktop applications using Python. We can develop standalone or desktop. Standalone or desktop application means once we design and develop the application using Python, so the application in which mission you install over there, that mission only, it will be run. You cannot able to run on multiple devices. And also we cannot able to exchange the information from one system to another system. We cannot able to share the data or communicate. So this is fixed with only one particular system or one particular computer. This type of applications are standalone or desktop. But in standalone or desktop, there are two types of applications are there. One is console application. This means CUI, this command user interface or character user interface, you may command user interface or character user interface, we can say that. <clears throat> This is CUI based. That means as a programmer, we need to deal with every time characters only. Your input should be in the form of characters and output also will come in the form of characters. And moreover, using Python, we can develop desktop GUI also, graphical user interface this is. That means Windows Calculator is the example of a, a graphical user interface application. Meaning is as soon as when we open Windows Calculator, you can see this is Microsoft related, okay? But you can, even in Python, we can develop this kind of application. This is completely GUI scenario. So there are some buttons are available and uh, text boxes available. We are interacting with this form. This is called GUI mode, graphically well-designed. This is this type of applications are desktop GUI. And even this is graphically designed, but it's not a distributed application. Still, it is a standalone. Only we can install in particular device. On that particular device, this type of applications can be work, like gaming application, most of the cases. Okay. And coming to this using Python, we can develop web application. This is our main motto in Django point of view. Web application means these are all also called as online or distributed applications. Distributed applications. These applications can be provide services over the web. The application which will provide the services over the web is called web application. And for web application, uh, you need not to install any software directly. Once we have a web address, you can go and type in the URL automatically internet through, it will open. So all the applications, web applications are available to all users or all customers over the world. 
So around the globe, we can able to access these web applications. This type of web application also we can develop using Python, but only Python, it's not possible to build web applications. As you know that Django framework are required or Flask framework is required along with Python. Django is one of the popular framework, especially which is written in Python. It can be used to develop web applications. And Flask is also one of the popular micro framework which can be used to develop single page applications with Python only. And coming to this, not only web application and network programming also, we can write by using Python. See, before Python, most of the net network developers were used C, C++ for their scripting and coding for managing that route configuration, all those things. But nowadays, these network programmers also are moving towards Python because they'll manage their code easily with Python built-in libraries. So next, uh, testing. Testing application also we can build. So nowadays, testing Selenium, uh, QTP, Win Runner, Win Runner, Win Loader, so many tools are there, automation tools in testing. They are asking to write Python script for writing test cases. Previously, they were used a uh, programming language called Java as well as C Sharp for writing test cases for automation. But nowadays, they are also looking forward Python test cases along with Selenium, all the things. In testing application also, Python can be used. And also we can develop very faster rate application is possible. That is gaming applications. We can develop quickly using Python because a lot of gaming libraries are there. And Python became a popular language for especially in this area only now it is data analysis or we can call it as data science. So majority of the people are using Python script in the analysis for programming and data science programming. Those who are looking forward for data analysis and data science, please try to concentrate more on data structures of Python, which I'm going to cover in our upcoming session and data types and data structures. These data structures will play the important role in analysis part and visualization part in your case. So those who are looking forward for data analysis or data science programming after learning Python. And then Python also can be used in AI, artificial intelligence, and now ML, machine learning, and also deep learning. And also we can say Python through, we can develop a business applications. If one of the client uh, came with business applications according to their business needs, you can collect the requirements from them. You can also fulfill that requirements by using Python with Django or any framework also clearly. So this is the basic area, application area of Python and lot more also we can do this. So web applications, network programming, testing, gaming, analysis and data science, artificial intelligence, ML, DL, business applications and many more are here. So this is exactly application area of Python development. Like means using Python, we can develop these applications clearly. And some important basic features also I'm going to discuss. So after that, we'll begin with the installation setup, mostly in tomorrow. So let's go for Python features. So as I said that Python uh, is a simple and easy to learn. This is one of the basic feature, simple and easy to learn. So Python is a simple programming language. So when we uh, compared with other existing programming language or C++, we will write less number of lines of code that means uh, it's more readability and simplicity. We can reduce development of uh, cost of the project also because quickly we can finish the Python code compared to other existing language. And other feature is Python is completely free and open source, free and open source. The code uh, of Python is completely open to all. So you can visit official website, python.org. You can read the documentation clearly. If you can understand, you can get the code from there and you can implement into your code. It's a free open source code. And software is completely free software. You need not to do any license and you need not to pay to anyone. Directly you can visit python.org and you can get that software from there and install it and use uh, your logics. So free and open source completely. So it's an open source so that we can 
customize the source code which is collected from the official website or git repository from anywhere vast community is there so based on your requirement we can able to uh, customize the code also as i said that python is a uh, cross platform or platform independent this is another feature platform independent so cross platform or platform independent means so python can be able to run on any operating system like windows linux mac os and any more any more so it's a cross platform so it is not fixed with only windows operating system it can be run on any platform easily so and moreover uh, python programs are completely portable so that means portability in nature portability that means we can migrate from one platform to another platform easily so platform ind independent also like uh, uh, once we write python program it can run on any platform without rewriting the code again and again because internally pvm is there that is python virtual mission which will take responsible to convert mission understandable format clearly and python programs are portable that means we can migrate from one platform to another platform very easily so even after shifting the platform to another platform the result what we uh, uh, what we uh, get from other platform same result we will get same other platform also clearly so what we received the result from existing platform same result you are expecting to other platform result will not be changed that is accurate result okay that's called portability in nature python programs by default and as i said that it is a dynamically typed language that means no need to specify any data type so data type will decide internally based on your value what we assign to the variables but in other languages like java c c++ that are statically typed languages then we have to provide that data type at the beginning only that means at the time of writing the code and coming to this python is having both procedure oriented procedure oriented and object oriented this is also important sir procedure oriented and object oriented language python language supports both procedure oriented like c pascal etc how they, they are having procedures and object oriented like c++ java c sharp dotnet all features are also there in python so we can get benefits like security and reusability everything is there in python and as I, as i said that python is completely extensible language yes sir yeah. extensible extensible means we can use other language programs in python that means if you want to use that c language code or java code or dotnet code you can also extend with python the main advantage of this extensibility feature is we can use already existing non python code into python so that we can improve the performance of the application because you feel that which i have written already c language then i can rewrite uh, i need to rewrite into python that's not required directly we can able to extend that that purpose we need to use some flavors like c programmers they'll use some flavor called c python and java programmers they'll use flavor called j python and dot net programmers usually use iron python flavors use this flavors into their editors then they can able to develop the code and they can integrate with python it's possible here extensibility is possible here and python is having huge standard library this is one of the top most feature because of this only python became a popular language this is huge standard library so that means once python if you download and install you will get lot of libraries so python has a rich in built in libraries being a programmer we can use this libraries directly and we are not required to write any code from scratch or functionality directly all the functionality is pre defined and pre implemented that will come directly and you can use it and enjoy your code so this is exactly basic and important features of python so these are the features and application area of python and the versioning of python which version we are going to looking forward in our session mean python 3.11.0 and we will discuss what new features are there in this 3.11.0 also what was the previous version features so python.org is the official website 
if you want to download any version of python then you can visit this official website and get it the software clearly and this is the small story of python and what type of language it is python we discuss in detail so this is the basic idea of python which we make so next in tomorrow session we will go for making setup of python for example you are new to completely python so how we can start the programming part in uh, your uh, uh, system i will assist you clearly so step by step process those who want uh, those who wants to continue my lectures from tomorrow session don't miss tomorrow session at least because you will come to know a clear picture in tomorrow what softwares are required and how to make setup of that and i am going to introduce tomorrow a lot of editors and lot of possible ways to write python script finally we will fix with one possible way and which is always good for beginners that is pycharm editor through i'll continue my lectures so that you will get idea what are the possible ways to write python script how many sources are there and which source is the best source for your practice so we will come to know in tomorrow so i request you please join tomorrow those who really wish to continue my lectures don't skip tomorrow session at least because tomorrow is the important session you can understand that downloading software and installation of software and making full fledged setup of python once you you know how to make setup it will be easy to handle in further session programming so that's all from my side today if you have any question you can feel free to ask me now i'll wait here for 10 minutes hi can we completely uninstall uh, python uh, using pip or is that only we have to delete that folder no the thing is uh, what the way you install uh, are you installed uh, like uh, did you install system environment or virtual environment is the matter uh it's system environment only i installed through pip install no problem let it keep why you need to uninstall no i have uh, two uh, two versions one is 2.4 and uh, the three so this uh, pycharm is having a clash on which to choose no no that was that's what i'm saying first actually whenever you go to directly command prompt and check version like python i space hyphen hyphen version then you can mm. notice that which version is uh, populating that is system environment version might be which is going to take first and if you have any separate virtual environment you can go to that environment you can use that environment that's what actually virtual environment purpose is that is only okay so basically you mean to say we create a, a virtual environment on 3.x and we can point out pycharm to that virtual environment and we can continue yes, executing yes 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 on that environment which version you have installed then that version will be impact on your project so that's what programmers might be create different virtual environments to work on different different style of coding so that is okay. what environment is lack okay 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 got it thank you so generally when we go to command prompt and check the version then on system environment what version you install that will be uh, shown that it's not going to show in uh, uh, virtual environment if you want to check the versioning uh, on to particular environment then what we need to do you have to move to that environment after that then you can check the version that version will be display clear okay 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 uh can you repeat uh, point number 7 and 8 please the features of python 7 is an extensible that means what actually we can able to uh use other language code also like c language or c++ or java with python okay and line and... number uh, line number 8 is it's a standard libraries that means uh, libraries means it's a collection of predefined stuff so already pre designed this we can say straight away ready made resources these are all that means uh, already resources are available okay. which will be installed in your computer that resources we can able to directly use in your python code by importing that libraries okay. suppose suppose if you want to develop any game application gaming libraries you can write on the top of the code all gaming library stuff and functions everything will come to your program you can directly use that functions if not libraries available what we need to do we need to develop from scratch everything that's big headache mm -hmm. yeah and you said something dot net program iron what is that tell me uh, you said yeah 
dot net or something like you said uh, dot net program or and yeah, then yeah. That, that's see, what, I uh, didn't get that. Mm -hmm. The reason is extensible means we can able to extend the other language code into mm -hmm. Python. Uh, like C programmers generally use the flavor called C Python flavor, which they mm -hmm. want to write Python related okay. code. And Java programmers, they'll use the flavor called JPython, which is related to Java related uh, type of code they'll write and extends with Python only. And so okay. .NET programmers, Microsoft .NET is one of the famous tool. Uh, that uh, framework also is useful. Uh, they'll use Iron Python flavor for writing. Okay. Python. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Means after completing the course, we are going to uh, do some projects so we can have a hands on on the project. Obviously, obviously, that project all we are going to deal with the Django with respect of uh, REST API, all these things. Uh, it will be real time, right? Yes, real time in the sense no real time. The word we cannot use real time, but mm -hmm. the majority of the people will get confused. The real time in the sense, really, if you have a client or you're doing a project per client, then that is called real time. But we will say uh, hands-on project means we can take or we can create mm -hmm. our own requirements and we can fulfill that requirements in the process of writing our own code that is called hands-on project. That is project okay. real time mode. Okay, and it would be only a cut operation or apart from cut operation we are looking for, uh, we, we will no, do. No, no. Crud, crud operations, it's a very common and everywhere it is possible. Uh, in yeah. our sessions, multiple ways crud operations will do. It doesn't make sense that is a project, but project is different actually. Crud operation is different. Okay, thank you. I have a last question. Uh, can you re uh, can you repeat that number uh, point number five features of Python? Sure, that is five numbers of, of dynamically typed. As I said, that yeah. dynamically typed means in Python, so no need to uh, define the variable. Uh, sorry, data type in uh, this variable declaration. So it's automatically assigned the data type for a. So it's a dynamically typed. So int a is not valid for the Python because it's a dynamically typed. Dynamically means at the time of uh, program execution, data type will assign for a variable. So no need to specify any data type at the time of declaring variable, as I mentioned earlier. Okay. Yeah, uh, one more question. By what time we can finish uh, code and advance Python? It takes 45 days to 50 days, as I said. Once Only if you enroll for the Python code and advance, 45 days to 50 days exactly. And uh, only full stack development, like including Django, REST, as well as Flask and uh, uh, UI, MySQL, all these things, it will take four to four and a half months maximum. So are we getting the exercise like every day to practice the... Obviously, Python? Obviously, ex exercise will, uh, every day will give, once I start coding part, mostly after one or two days, then whenever I start the coding part, so from there onwards, topic-wise exercise programs, I'll hand over to you. Yeah, and uh, overall uh, program will be finished, I think, around four to five minutes, right? Four to? Uh, overall our program means from Python to all things means all over, uh, I think um, all full stack program will be finished in four to five months, right? Five months. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so Mohan sir, in, uh, will you be talking about connecting Python to database, extracting information from database and processing it? Obviously, we are going to deal with uh, here in Python, MySQL, as well as MS SQL, Microsoft SQL Server. Okay. Same thing with Django, sir. I mean, Django and Flask, you do similar ones or? No, Django is, uh, uh, actually Django, we'll use MySQL as well as SQL library also. But apart from okay. that, uh, in Django, it's actually we are not going to interfere with the database. The reason is Django is built in ORM tool is there, object relational mapper. Completely, okay, you, can, you can write Python classes, Python code through, we can generate a table actually. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Okay, so thank you. In the Flask, there is no, ORM tool, but we use uh, database kind of things like same ORM only actor that is SQL Alchemy there is that we can okay. use.
So and also I see see Django APIs and uh, like it's a full full web development, I guess, sir. Correct, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's... Thank you, Mohan. You are attending. Yes, you are attending my DJ on 9 p.m. Right, Krishna? Yeah, yeah. So because I attended that, I like I liked your style, sir. Because you know what, you you are covering that certain part, but I also want to make sure that I very clear on the Python too, right? Because Python is very much needed for Django and anything yeah, yeah, you do, right? Obviously, so, that's what I said. Python is the main subject which you can deal with all these uh, uh, remaining subject like Django, REST, Flask, all this. Yeah, of because we, without knowing the in-depth Python, I don't think so. You can be a good uh, front-end developer in Django. I don't believe so. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, did, did you buy in this course? What, what can you repeat it? Uh, do you cover Pandas and NumPy in this course? Surely. Pandas, as I said, that Pandas and Matplotlib and uh, with NumPy with CSV files, comma separated values, XLC dealing, that we can cover in advanced Python. Okay, thank you so much. So that's all for now from my side. It's time to leave. So, uh, if you really wish to continue this lecture, don't skip tomorrow at least because tomorrow is the main setup of uh, Python uh, software. After that, we will start writing code. This is the uh, uh, next session is the crucial for everyone. So you will understand that what Python set up, how to do it and what uh, software editors I'm going to use, which is the best one, which is I'm going to recommend in tomorrow's session. Then that editor through only I'm going to Collect all lectures of uh, Python, Django, Flask, and other things. I hope uh, I'll also you uh, to install same thing, so it will be better. Otherwise, you can go through any editor where you comfort what you comfort. So you will come to know in tomorrow session that. So that's all from my side. Have a nice time. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, Mohan. Yeah, tell me. Uh, uh, Mohan, one quick question. So we were talking about what we would be seeing in the uh, uh, Python, right? Like um, uh, in the advanced Python. So will we be also uh, learning about streaming? Like uh, uh, streaming or I would say parallel threading? multi threading we will discuss uh, multi uh, multi threading yeah. yeah yeah there is a topic that is big topic in python advanced okay. how to prepare threads and uh, thread synchronization and all those things okay. multiple tasks we can do process based and thread based all these things are there okay we we have it in our syllabus right sure okay 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 excellent thank you so let's begin today's session and before I start uh, today's session. So let me explain in the last two sessions, I just uh, uh, conducted basic sessions like introduction to Python full stack development and each and every subject in detail and what is the purpose of that subject. And also we discussed application area of Python and features of Python. Now it's time to uh, make setup of Python step by step we'll discuss in detail today. Today, complete lecture is uh, uh, how to do setup of Python to write the code and to build the application. So what software tools are required, how to proceed, we'll discuss now. So installation steps I'm showing, but before that installation step, so you just check in your computer whether Python software is already installed or not. Even if, in, if it is installed already, then which version of Python is there? If you want to check, then you can go through simply one simple command prompt. You can go to command prompt. There you just type uh, a simple command called Python space iPhone iPhone version. So this command so will bring clearly that which version is available 
if you have a python software in your computer if you don't have simply it's it can say python was not recognized that indicates that you don't have any python software you need to install it but in my mission so already i have installed python software so that's what we are getting the version python 3.11.0 it's a current stable and latest version but i want to uninstall this one because of i need to show you clearly step by step how to install this software to do this just go to control panel so let's go to uninstall this program yes uninstallation is cross progress now so and making setup of python is very simple it won't take much more time so hardly total our software setup will be in 2 to 3 minutes only so let it be uninstall it after that we will show you how to download and install python software and one more important thing i want to tell you whatever the editor you are going to prefer to use no matter you can use it but before that i strongly recommend to uh, install this python software so without python software installation so don't go with any editor tool like edit players even notepad jupiter spider atom and pycharm okay visual studio code like this these are the editors and many more editors are there but i can strongly recommend to use a proper editor that is called pycharm or else if you ask me to a uh, second option of apart from pycharm means i can say vs code that is visual studio code you can also do it so that's also a good editor for python beginners so it will be easy to handle it as i said that numpy pandas matplotlib already i said in the last session i'll cover clearly that okay yeah <clears throat> so now ready to uninstall it is so there is no python software in this computer right now even you can go and check out in command prompt also so there you don't find any python software version so it's doing some uninstallation process so because i need to show you clearly step by step how to do installation again yes so completely uninstallation is over even just for confirmation you can go to command prompt back and simply type python space hyphen hyphen version so you see now previously it was python 3.11.0 now this time it is what actually uh, there is no python software python was not found you can also use anaconda distribution whenever we install anaconda distribution there was there was a lot of uh, editors tools will come like jupiter spider vs code also integrated with anaconda distribution no problem that will also work fine but most of the data analysis and data science programmers will use jupiter and spider uh, editors for writing python script while doing their data analysis concept only but for pure python developers will prefer to use vs code or else pycharm editor because a lot of frameworks also built in integrated in that so they can easily work with that right now in my computer there is no python software so let's try to download and install to download and install python software simply you can go to google and download python you will be able to navigate to python.org so this is the latest version which i am using download python 3.11 now you can see here downloaded successfully done once downloaded completely so you can go to download folder in your computer 
So just this is the .exe file, Python 3.11.0. Just double click on it. So now here we can uh, just concentrate a bit more. So I strongly recommend to do this install now. But before installation now, so I strongly recommend to add this checkbox, activate this checkbox, add python.exe to path. So if you forgot this, so after writing Python script, so you may not pass the commands to the operating system for executing your Python code. So even if you forgot here in this case, if you don't, if you didn't activate this uh, uh, python.exe, later also we can do manually, but don't forget to do this. You can activate this checkbox after activation of this checkbox, 